We just make shit decisions. Men make immoral decisions. We make irrelevant decisions. We make immature decisions. We make decisions when we don't even know there's a decision to be made. <laughs> but you know what? At least we make a decision. No. <laughs> Let's try this one on with the class, will we, eh? <laughs> Look at all the couples sitting there now. Look, you listen to him. You listen to him! <laughs> I went to see Patrick Healy the other night. Was he funny? No, but he was true! <laughs> Is it just me? Am I an indecision magnet? Eh? Honestly, I can get all sorts of women. Can I get a woman who will make a decision? I'm not talking big decisions. I'm not talking should I murder your man and move to Australia. <laughs> Talking everyday decisions. What do you want to do tonight? Look, I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> well, we, well, I don't know. We go for a takeaway, or we could get a movie, or go for a meal. What do you want to do? No, I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> so you go to the restaurant. The sommelier comes over. Would sir like red? Would sir like white? Oh God, I don't know, maybe, maybe the red, but then the red stains my teeth. Maybe the white, but hang on, are you having the fish? Because if you're having the fish, then you should have the white and have a little sip. Oh, I don't know, I really don't, I'm really not sure. Just the red, please, yeah. Save yourself, go for it, I have to live with this, okay? <laughs> Gets to the starter, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe the duck or, 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 the, or the prawns, or the duck and the prawns. Hang on, am I allergic to the duck? No, did, did Jill like the prawns? Oh, I don't know, I'm not sure, I don't know. I, if you were me, what would you have? You by the fucking throat, that's what I am! <laughs> Girls, have you any idea how difficult it is for a man to sit in a restaurant, look across at the woman he loves, and think to himself, if I marry this woman, she's going to want to decide the name of my firstborn child. <laughs> if I marry this woman and I'm unfaithful, she's going to decide whether to keep me in the house or make me leave and keep half my stuff. <laughs> if I'm involved in a terrible accident, and I'm on a life support machine. <laughs> She's gonna decide whether to keep me alive or turn me off. And I'm looking at her and she can't even make her mind up between the chocolate cake and the sticky toffee pudding. <laughs> and you know the worst thing about this? I'm looking at a couples. I'm looking at a couples now who women should now be turning to the men and going, oh my God, would I turn it off? Would I keep it on? Would I turn it off? Would I keep it on? <laughs> And the only thing going through your minds, girls? Chocolate cake, toffee pudding. <laughs> oh, it's a toffee patty, it's a toffee, ooh. Is the cake hot? <laughs> Do you remember years ago, when they were making Braveheart, everyone said, oh, it's ridiculous. Mel Gibson playing a Scottish guy. That's not gonna be very convincing. And look at him now, an alcoholic racist. <laughs> the most Scottish thing I've ever seen, I was going through a town called Bathgate at night, and there was a guy pissing against the front door, <laughs> like that, who then took out his keys and went inside. <laughs> I'm from Glasgow. If I had to explain Glasgow to you, I'd say that if I had to pick a city in the world where I could depend on a member of the public to punch a man who was on fire. <laughs> to punch a flaming man to the ground. We should get a photo of that blown up and use it as the welcome sign at Scottish airports. And underneath, we should have the words, Scotland welcomes careful drivers. <laughs> I mean, the naivety of Al-Qaeda trying to bring religious war to Glasgow. <laughs> We're 400 years ahead of you guys. You've not even got a football team. <laughs> There's a fallacy, isn't there, that that baggage handler prevented hundreds of people from being horribly burned. These were Scottish people flying to Spain. <laughs> people 
people say it's good they didn't hit a fuel depot. I think it's good they didn't hit the queue coming out of duty free. <laughs> they got up like Hiroshima. <laughs> British Army have got a big recruiting drive on in Scotland at the minute. Because that's what you need if you're fighting an unwinnable war in the desert. More ginger people. <laughs> that's why they couldn't send Prince Harry. They couldn't afford the resources required to start developing Factor 60,000 sunblock. <laughs> it's not always the friendliest place in the world, Scotland. I once saw an English guy in Glasgow trying to order a pint of lager and lime, and the barman went, we don't do cocktails. <laughs> we can't just be dour, negative bastards up there. John Logie Baird invented the TV, and when people came up to congratulate him, he went, aye, but there's fuck all on. <laughs> We're looking forward to the Olympics in London. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> they say the Olympics is going to rekindle English national pride. I mean, come on. For 9.2 billion, you could have written fuck off Germany onto the moon. I was such a fat kid. My mother used to buy bathing suits with blowholes in them. It was just... <laughs> But my I don't want to go into my childhood here because it's wrong. My parents hated me, okay? We're all going to hear the story, aren't we? My parents hated me too. My parents, all I ever heard, all I ever heard growing up is, why can't you be like your cousin Sheila? Why can't you be like your cousin Sheila? Sheila had died at birth. They just oh, hated, me. hated me. They, whatever we go like in front of a street, they'd take, each parent would take my hand, hold our hand, we're crossing the street, and then they'd swing me into the traffic. Was, they used to say, take candy from strangers. It is, ask the funny man in the raincoat, does he own a van? It is just, no, I, I had a very bad childhood, and that's because, and I'm sure none of you give a damn, but I was the only Jewish kid, this is the absolute truth, growing up in an all-Catholic neighborhood. You know what that's? The Irish people. Only Jewish kid in a Catholic neighborhood. You know what that's like? You were all doing Hail Marys, I was doing Hail Murrays. I mean, it was just... <laughs> no Christmas tree? No Christmas tree. Do you know what that's like when you're the only kid without a Christmas tree? Because everybody has Christmas trees. And nowadays, it's like, well, we do it for all faiths. That's such bullshit. Yeah, we walk into, a, into a, uh, an office building, and there's a Christmas tree, and there's a Renora. Bullshit. The Christmas tree goes up, 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 up. There's like a little shitty menorah with two orange lights and some angry Puerto Ricans lit backwards. I mean, uh, yes. <laughs> Juan, you lit those lights backwards. Fuck you, you killed our Lord. I mean, it is just... So, I'm at the age where I figure, screw it, I'm gonna have a Christmas tree. I got the biggest Christmas tree in... I got a two-story high Christmas tree. I put everything you could think of on that... Up, 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 gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. On the bottom, I got the, the manger. I got the whole goddamn thing going there. The wise men, the sheep. The only thing is, I have the baby, but I'm Jewish. I got him a nanny. It was just... Oh, yes. And I redressed Mary. She didn't look good. That stupid thing over her head. Come on. I put her in a Chanel suit, <laughs> Manolo Blahnix, and a Louis Vuitton pocketbook. You're the mother of God. Look it. It is just... <laughs> Am I wrong? If she had looked like that, she would have gotten into the inn. Yes. <laughs> the point is, it's about looks. Mary, she looked good. She would have done better. Mother Teresa, <laughs> oh. Oh, don't give me, oh, Mother Teresa, if she had looked better, she'd be a saint by now. <laughs> Was she a bow wow? Yes, sir. did she need electrolysis? Let's talk to each other here. <laughs> Even lepers were throwing their fingers at her. Here, get the break. Because <laughs> it is all about looks. This is my message, Great Britain. This is my message. Looks count, education, <laughs> looks count. <laughs> 
I have no sex appeal, and it has screwed me up for life. Peeping Toms, look at my window, pull down the shade. You have, you have no idea. My gynecologist examines me by telephone. It is just... And I got mugged once, and I don't know if you've ever been mugged and fought back. I didn't, right? It was so scary. I was in Brighton. This bloke pushed me against the wall and went, give us all your money. I ain't got any money. I genuinely called for my mum. How pathetic is that? <laughs> mum, as if my mum's going, oh, Russell's in trouble. I don't know what that is. Apparently my mum's a meerkat all of a sudden. <laughs> right. I went and I told my little brother about getting mugged. Did he care? No. It was sort of a, what happened, Russ? A little bit of wee come out. He got really angry. What'd you do that for? Like I'd done it on purpose. I'm not a toad. Didn't try and ward him off with my venomous piss. <laughs> I didn't think you were under attack. Secrete, toad boy. Show him your powers. I've wet my pants. <laughs> he offered me advice. Genuinely, well, you know you're a weed, Russ. Just use your brain. Next time, bamboozle the mugger. That was his genuine advice. But how do you bamboozle anybody? Someone like, give us all your money. Well, you say that. But what, my friend, is the opposite to opposite? Consider yourself bamboozled. Who's next? <laughs> Do you like my credit card details? What colour does a Smurf go when we choke it? You know my name. They call me the bamboozler. <laughs> Ridiculous. The worst superhero in the world. If I was going to have any superpower, I'd like the ability to make somebody orgasm just by touching them once. Not for sexual purposes. That would be amazing in a fight. Kill him! <laughs> Kill him, Steve. I'm trying to, but I'm too horny. <laughs> I haven't got that skill. If I had that skill, I wouldn't be, a, be in the zoo causing a great deal of mischief. <laughs> Which animal, old lady? The hippo! You got it. <laughs> I'm not very good at sex. I'm quite confident sexually, but I make mistakes. Do you know what I mean? Has anyone ever tried using food in the bedroom? Has anyone ever? Look at you going, we're not telling you. Is that <laughs> it went really badly. It was so, I was like 19 and I read in a magazine like 59 ways to please your lady and you're using food. So I went and bought, now this is a mistake, I went and bought a four pack of Rolo yogurt. And <laughs> rather than tell my then girlfriend what I had planned, I pretty much waited for her like some hideous yogurt goblin. And <laughs> I doubt there's anything more terrifying and yet pathetic to come home and find your boyfriend naked holding yogurt. <laughs> I panicked, and I, I didn't put a little bit. Honestly, we're both fine with the arrangement. I pretty much covered her, right? <laughs> Every bit of skin I could find. By the time I'd finished, she looked a bit like Morph. You... <laughs> she's no longer my girlfriend. Now she's an angry meal. Amy. <laughs> Where do you start licking? You can't lick randomly. And then she looks like she's got an illness. So I did foot up to knee. That took me an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we're having fun now, aren't we having fun? Why aren't I going out with a hobbit? <laughs> Two hours later, we realised she's dairy intolerant. We're down the doctors. She looked like an angry gingerbread lady who'd had her leg dipped in Tipex. Right? Put my name in the internet the other day. Oh, I wish I'd never bothered. I'm on a website, 20 celebrities I'd like to punch.com. <laughs> Madonna, J Lo, Tom Cruise, and then me. I'm the only one who can't afford a fucking bodyguard. <laughs> Jayla ain't gonna get tracked outside Morrison's, is she? Now it'd be me. <laughs> Have you seen me fight? I can't fight. It's a cross between river dance and a doggy paddle, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> If it can go wrong, anything will with me. Honestly, I just attract bad luck. How many people do you know can get sexually assaulted on a Jack the Ripper walk? <laughs> I thought it was part of the experience. <laughs> oh, Jack, your hands are cold. <laughs> <laughs> now, honestly, if you look like a victim, you get treated like a victim, don't you, sir? Yeah. <laughs> oh, your life's been shit. No, I mean, that's like when I went and got me glasses. I had the afternoon off school. He comes in with these glasses, honestly, that thick. That thick. I said, I can't see the board, not the Pennines. <laughs> you can see the future. You, you can see the future. <laughs> I was telling me, and the lottery numbers. Five, <laughs> 48, nine. No, it's horrible when you lose your sight. It's horrible. I was on the train the other day. They've got Braille now in the toilets in the train. <laughs> Braille. 
So if a blind person couldn't smell, that was a fucking toilet. <laughs> <laughs> They're hardly gonna go, buffet car? <laughs> Changing unit in brown now. Baby changing unit. Blind person changing a baby on a train in a toilet. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Let's make it interesting. Pop some roller skates on. <laughs> My dad's still not pleased that I'm doing this job. Always oh, not happy. My parents, they're pushy parents, but they're not like pushy as those parents you get on, you know, Britain's Got Talent or stars in your eyes, kids. Those parents are too pushy, aren't they? You know, when the door opens and the smoke clears, you can see the parents' foot saying, get on that fucking <laughs> The little kid's trembling at the back going, who the hell's Patsy got crazy? <laughs> The worst thing for me was being picked for the team. That was awful. Do you remember standing in line waiting to get picked? It's like ethnic cleansing, weren't it? <laughs> All the fit and healthy people at one end. <laughs> me and the fat kids. <laughs> Those kids were fat. <laughs> one girl had to be cut out of a hula hoop. <laughs> Nip me kit, nip me kit. I had to go to Lost Property Box. Do you remember the smell from Lost Property Box? <laughs> Those clothes weren't lost. <laughs> no one loses the clothes in that box. <laughs> They're just clothes that Africa had sent back. <laughs> Getting their own back for Harvest Festival. That's what they were doing. Then we had to send food over to Africa. What did my mum send? Pineapple chunks and peach slices. They threw them over there! Now, one question that I get asked all the time, so don't text me with this, is if you could take a pill that would make you thin, would you take it? Of course I bleed and well would. I would like to take a pill that made me six stone. Then I could eat my way back up to ten. <laughs> What a bloody brilliant weekend that would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> you see, I think there's two types of people in the world, right? And it's all to do with how they eat biscuits, right? Because the first type of person makes a cup of tea, gets a plate out... <laughs> ..opens the packet of biscuits, takes one biscuit out, puts it on the plate... <laughs> and eats it very daintily off the plate. Folds the packet back up, bit of sellotape over the top to keep it fresh for next month. <laughs> now, those sort of people should be executed, shouldn't they? Because... <laughs> the rest of us get a packet out, eat the whole fucking lot without taking the cover off, do we, really? <laughs> and consequently end up looking like me. Because I've always had a weight problem. You know, when I was a, a teenager, I remember going to see the careers mistress, and she said, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'd like to be a nurse or get married. She went, better be a nurse then. <laughs> <laughs> when I was actually a teenager, I wasn't frightened of teenage boys, but I'm terrified of them now. They're a scary bunch, aren't they? And, you know, I actually have teenage nephews, and one of them always has a sign on his door saying, keep out, like you're going in there without a flamethrower. <laughs> Lend me my crampons, dear. I'm just popping in to tackle Tissue Mountain. Um... <laughs> and, of course, the worst thing I think you can do with teenagers is try and kind of get down and speak their language. They hate that, don't they? Which is why I quite like doing it. And I, I actually found this out to my cost last year, right? Because I went around for months going to people, would you look at that minja over there? <laughs> that is a minja and a half, that is, isn't it? <laughs> and I found out that this was actually wrong. To my cost, outside my local park, there were two teenage boys. I went, come lads, look at that minja. What a blinking minja that is. <laughs> And they went, oh, for Christ's sake, it's Minga. And that's our mum. So, you know... 
Do we have many politically active people in tonight? One. Well done, sir. <laughs> No, because I've been a Labour Party supporter all my life, and in fact, at the last election, I was asked by Tony Blair to go and speak at a rally in Hove. Oh, joy. And, um, <laughs> but, you know, it just made me think, standing in, in the front row with all these dignitaries, these Labour Party dignitaries, I've come a long way since fags behind the bike sheds. Because I had Blunkett there, I had Cherie Blair there, Tony Blair came along the row, sh shaking everyone's hand, got to me and said, thanks for doing this, Joe. Kiss me on the lips, <laughs> trying to get his tongue in. <laughs> Got up to do my speech, Blunkett had undone my bra. Because <laughs> they're mad for it. They are. I was shocked, you know, because I was brought up in a little country village. The only thing we had to do at the weekend was bell ringing. Now, I don't know if anyone's tried that, but it's much harder than it looks, which I believe is something John Prescott says to a lot of women that he meets. But. Uh, <laughs> You are now looking at me going, shit, look at his hair. Now. <laughs> now. I am in the mid-stage of growing an afro. I'm well aware that this is the shit stage. <laughs> For some reason, this alone gives people license to shout out shit to me in the street. <laughs> so for your information, I know what year it is. Mm -hmm. I've never been near a car wash. <laughs> and who the fuck is Shaft? <laughs> I walk down the road, Shaft, Shaft! I look down, my cock is hanging out. <laughs> oh yes, ladies, some stereotypes I can live with. <laughs> Big cock. <laughs> Very happy to be here. Uh, uh, look around the room. So many sinners sitting here amongst us tonight. Oh, yes, there are. There's a man sitting right in my eye line, sitting right over there. Look at him. Openly, openly wearing glasses. <laughs> Have you found Jesus? <laughs> the Lord gave you vision at a limited rate. You defy him by wanting to see more. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Remove your glasses, see what is really here. <laughs> oh, look at this pretty lady, don't fight it. I can tell by your eyes that you want me. Hmm? <laughs> Oh, fuck it, I can't keep it up. Uh, it's all a joke. I've never left the country. Good evening, folks. Very, very, very pleased to be here tonight. I want to tell you a bit about myself, because I've started off quite aggressive, so I'll pull back, right? Um, my parents arrived in London in the 60s. And London in the 60s was very, very similar to um, Australia now. <laughs> No real diversity, right? <laughs> I remember my first day at primary school, I ran into the classroom, I ran straight back home, and I went, Mum, Mum, apparently there's a black boy in my class. <laughs> I can't find him anywhere. <laughs> so you young people, you're very, very lucky, right? Young people. How old are you, son? Right there, you. 16? What year were you born? Uh, 91. 1991. Did you hear that noise? <laughs> That's called jealousy. <laughs> there are people in this room with underpants and socks older than you. <laughs> Where are you from, child? Where are you from? London. London, big place, scale it down. I'm not driving a minicab. <laughs> Let's work together. Kilburn, North London, yeah. South London, representing. 